Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to make a mixed media Halloween card using some new products from the Tim Holtz Halloween collection. And we're also going to be using the new Halloween mica sprays as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start off with some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock, and this measures two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And we're going to be using the Distress Mica Stains today. These are from the new Halloween collection from Tim Holtz. And I'll show you these here up close. And I also have the second set, which we'll be using again later on. So the two colors that I grabbed for now are the Jack-O-Lantern and the Flickering Candle. And you can see at the bottom is all that yummy mica. So you want to make sure you shake these up really well and get that all mixed in. And then what I'm going to do is just start spritzing the cardstock here. I'm going to give it a nice spray, just kind of fill in. And I'm concentrating on the top area because the bottom is going to be covered by our, our little grassy border. Now, once I've done that, I want to mix these, blend these colors just a little bit. So I'm using my Distress Sprayer, which just has water in it. And I'm just going to spritz that. Again, I'm not worried about that bottom section too much. So now you will get some puddling. And you also have all that excess ink all around the edges, which I would use for something else. Just grab another piece of cardstock and dab that up and use that on a tag maybe. But for this purpose, I just, I'm going to just wipe that away and then I'll start heat setting this. And uh, you can already see how beautiful this is going to be. And it's going to have that beautiful shimmer to it, that beautiful mica shimmer. So I'm going to continue heating this. Now you could continue to dab this back into the water. So what I'm going to do here is pick up a little bit more ink. I just want to get a little bit more of those, I don't know, the drippy parts, I guess is the best way to call it. So I'm just dabbing it back in and I'm going to heat set that again. And you can do this as many times as you want to. Just keep layering up your color here. And again, you can see that I'm trying to get some of that kind of swirly motion. So I'm just using my finger here to add a little bit more of that. So now that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. And then I can clean off my glass media mat just with some water. So I'll just use that distress sprayer and spritz it with some water and wipe that clean. So it'll come right off. And don't forget to clean the nozzles on your mica sprays. Just make sure you wipe those down before you put them away. So now I just wanted to flatten this out a little bit before I go on. So I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. I've just put some paper in there to protect it. And I'm just going to run that a few times through the machine. And that will flatten it out a little bit. And then I'm going to attach it to a piece of black 100 pound cardstock which will have those same measurements of two and three quarters by five and three quarters. So now we'll set that aside and let's grab these beautiful dies here. We've got this little haunted house. We've got that little border there. And there's lots of other images on here, which we'll be getting to in a minute. So this is the ghost town number two. And there is a ghost town number one, which is really cute as well. So you can check that out. But I'm going to go ahead and take that little cemetery border and I'm going to run that through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. And I've die cut that out of some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock and I'm going to die cut quite a few of these. Now I'm going to that third mica stain and this one is called Empty Tomb. And this is a beautiful like granite color. And it really will look like the tombstones. And the way it's going to spray on this time, I'm not going to add the water. I love the way it puddled up there and gave that marbly effect to the stones. And we'll be covering the grassy border part later on. So I'm going to keep these just the way they came out. You could certainly add water if you wanted to, but I just love how that looks. So I'm going to set those aside to dry. Now let's go back to that set and grab that little house. So that's the first set of Distress Mica stains we used. And this is the second Halloween set. And this is Crooked Broomstick. And then we have 
Bubbling Cauldron and Hocus Pocus, which is this beautiful purpley color. So again, you wanna shake those up really well. I'm gonna go ahead and die cut two of these houses out of some white cardstock. And I'm just using my pick tool to punch out all those little pieces. And you can see there that that door, that little door there will open. So later on, we'll open that up just a little bit, just to add some dimension. So now I've got the Hocus Pocus color. I'm gonna go ahead and start spraying this. And here I am gonna go back to the water here just to move that ink around a little bit. And then I'll start heat setting it. And I just wanna heat set this kind of slowly here, just letting that ink dry. Then I'm going to just put it back in that ink a bunch of different times here, just till I get the look that I'm going for. So I'm just kind of heat setting it and adding more ink. And again, I'm just layering this up until I get the look that I wanted. And I did not want it to be even. I did want some light and dark areas. So again, I just kept kind of dabbing it in there until I got that look. And there you, again, you can see that beautiful shimmer that we have. So now I'm taking my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and I'm going to glue these two together. And that's just gonna make this a little bit thicker here. So now going back to this set, I'm grabbing the bats and those little clouds. I'm die cutting the bats out of some black 100 pound cardstock. And again, going back to my Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock to die cut the clouds. So I went ahead and ran all those through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. Now we can grab this beautiful gate. I just love this. Now this has two layers to it. But I'm going to create some layering by using some grit paste and some mica uh, sprays. This set is called the Gatekeeper. And I'm just going to take the detailed portion of the gate and I'm going to die cut two of these. And I did find that I needed to run this through quite a few times. And I also added some scrap paper here just to make it run through uh, there's so much detail in this die that I did run it through again a few different times and added that scrap paper just to make sure I'd get a nice cut. Now I'm going to, and I die cut two of each of these, so I'm going to go ahead and glue those together. And you could just see what a beautiful gate this is. So now again to the Tim Holtz Halloween collection. I've got these two little jars here. And you can see that one is texture paste and one is the grit paste. And I'll show you the difference between these two. This grit paste has a really nice textural look to it. And this one here is more smooth and creamy. So we're gonna set that one aside and we're gonna be using the grit paste. I want it to create a lot of dimension. I want this fence to look really old and kind of just like it's been sitting out in the elements forever. So what I'm doing is just using that, that flat edge brush here and I'm just gonna dab this on. So I'm not being fussy here, I'm just kind of dabbing it on. And it will feel like it's not really going to stay, but it will stay. Just keep applying a little coating of this And then I'm gonna do that same thing for the other side there. And again, this is gonna give it a really nice aged look. So you do wanna make sure you wash that brush really well so that that grit paste doesn't dry on there. Now I'm going back to that little graveyard border and I'm going to die cut a whole bunch of these in black. So I die cut, I think five or six of these. And then I'm cutting off the gravestones because we have those beautiful gravestones that we sprayed. So those are gonna sit right behind here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and glue these two together. Now you can see that up close. So I have a couple extra of those little borders there that we'll be using later on. And now I wanna create a little grassy border for my house to sit on. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. 
at a, maybe about two and a half inches. And I cut that from a panel that was the same width as the panel that we're using. So it's two and three quarter inches wide. Now using my Distress Oxide ink, I'm going to just go around the edges. I'm using a foam applicator tool here and I'm just going to add some shadow around the edges. Again, just to give it more of a haunted kind of a look here. But even though I'm adding this ink, and now I'm gonna add some to the background as well. Um, that mica shimmer will still show through. So I just kind of want to keep it the brightest, sort of down the middle here. So now that that's all set, I'm going to add a little bit of that black soot to the, just around these little clouds here. And I did that for all three of those. So now I've got some cardstock here. And what I wanted to show you is I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 9 by 12 pad so that I can get a 12 inch piece of paper here. So I'm going to cut it at 3 inches by 12 inches. And then I'm going to score it at the 6 inch mark. So it'll measure 3 by 6 and I'm, I've cut a black panel that measures the exact same. So this is three inches by six inches, and I'm gonna go ahead and attach these two together. So that will give us a mini slimline card. And this will be a top folding card. And now I'm just taking away that white edge by adding a little black all the way around here. So now we've got our background and we can go ahead and attach that to the front of the card and that'll leave a little tiny border of the black all the way around. Now I've got my little grassy border. I'm going to go ahead and attach that as well. And I can go ahead and attach the house. I'm using the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to attach that. And I'm just going around the edges a little bit more here just to take away any white that I see. And I did around the opening of that door because we're going to open that slightly. So I want it to be kind of dark around the edges when we open it up. So I'll go ahead and glue that down. Just make sure you don't put any glue on the back of that door if you do want to pop it up a little bit. Now I've got all of these little borders here. So what I'm going to do is just mix them up a little bit. I don't want them to all look exactly the same. So I'm just cutting them either in half or just cutting a couple of the gravestones off just to kind of mix the pattern here. And I'm just trying to figure out exactly where I, I want all of these to be. So I'm gonna play around with those and then I'll start gluing them together. So I'm going to start with this first one and just make sure I cut it to the right length here. So it's at two and three quarters. And then I'll start layering on all these other little pieces. And I am going to mix in just some of the grassy borders without the gravestones on it. Just kind of tuck those in here and there as well. Again, I just didn't want it to look the same all the way from front to back, so I'm just mixing things up. Now this little border will get fairly thick because I'm adding all of these pieces to it, but you'll see a little bit later on that that's going to work to our advantage because it's going to kind of hold our gate open a little bit. It'll give some added dimension to our gate. So don't worry too much if it feels like it's getting a little bit too thick. 
And of course, if you don't like that, you can always just do, do one of the borders. You don't have to use all of these. So let's go ahead and add that last piece here. And now you can see that has a more random look to it. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that right to the very bottom of this panel. So let's add the clouds. And I do want some of these to look like they're going off the edge a little bit here. And then I'll just trim those down to the width of that panel. So now let's also add the bats. I'm just adding a little glue towards the center of these. So you could pop up the wings a little bit here as well if you wanted to. So now here's where I'm going to just pull that door open just a little bit. I'm just using my tweezers there just to lift that up just a little bit. So now that the gate is completely dry, I'm going back to that crooked broomstick. This is the mica spray again, and I'm going to place a little bit on my glass medium mat. So I, I wanted to show you that you can use these mica sprays in a variety of ways. You could paint with them. You could just add some texture like I'm doing here. And just using them as sprays is, is another way. But there's a lot of versatility with these because these would be really beautiful to paint with as well. So I'm going to just dab on a little bit of that color here and there just to give this fence more of an aged look and I'm going right over that grit paste as well and you can see how that looks. It looks really grungy. So now I want to fold these gates just a little bit so I'm taking that wide end of each of the gates and I'm just folding it back on itself. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of glue there. I wanna make sure I just press that out with my fingers. And then I'm placing this right above that graveyard border. Because remember, that's fairly thick at this point. So I'm just putting the bottom of the gate there right at the, right at the top of that little border. And then I'm kind of just sliding it down in there until it I feel like it just sits just right in there. Just pressing that out, make sure that uh, is placed nice and securely there. And then I decided to add a couple little keys to my gate. And these are from Regions Beyond. And this little die here cuts two of the keys. We're just gonna be using that smaller one. So I'm gonna die cut six altogether. And then what I'll do is glue three together and then three more together. So we'll have two keys in the end. But I like that it die cuts the two at the same time because I can save those larger keys for another project. So let me just poke those out here. Just going to stack these up. Again, just stack up three. And that'll give us a nice thick key here. So those larger ones I'll just set aside again for another project and I'll go ahead and glue these three together. And I did a second one, same exact way. I'm going to let those dry and then I'm coming in with empty tomb and back to the crooked broomstick 
and I'm going to add some color to these as well. So I'm using both of these colors. Again, just spritzing them right on my glass media mat, and I'm just going to start patting on some color. And this dries very quickly, so it didn't take long to color these in. Just cleaning off my brush there and going to the second color. I was going to do one key, one color, and one the other, but I just didn't think it had enough dimension, so I ended up doing them both with the two colors. So now I'm taking from the word bands. These are the Tim Holtz Ideology Collection, and you can see you get lots of cute little word bands there. And then I'm using my Distress Crayons and I want the black one. And what I'm doing is I'm just rubbing that crayon right into the crevices on this word band and just filling that in with black. Even though it was black, I just didn't feel like it was dark enough. So, and then with a damp paper towel, I'm just gonna wipe off any excess. And here I'm just going back to fill in a little bit more here. And that'll give us a nice jet black color in there. So now I want to tie it on to my gate here, and I'm using just some twine that I had in my stash. And I was trying to figure out the best way to do this here, because I didn't want to have like a bow or anything like that. So what I decided to do here was just kind of come up from behind there through the gates, and then go loop back through the gate to the back side. I'm going to string on those two keys first here, and then I'm going to slide that back through the gate and tuck it in behind this word band. I'll do that for both sides here. So I'm going to tie a knot, and then we will secure that in the back behind this. So I'm going to tie that nice and tight, and then I'm going to clip away the excess there. And then what I'm going to do is take some of my multi-medium matte glue and I'll tuck it in behind here just so that that twine stays behind the word band. And that also adds some dimension here as well. And then I'll glue down the keys, just kind of gluing them in the position that I want them to be. And then I'll hold this for a little while. I did hold it for quite a while just to make sure it was nice and dry. Now I want to add a little brown crystal gem and I'm using the Pink Fresh Studio gems here which I just got so I had to use one of these. And I'm going to place one of those right at the top of the house there. There's a little opening there so I put one in there in that beautiful chocolate brown color. So now you can see that beautiful mica background we have. I love the shimmer on that. And then all the grunge that we have on that gate. So that grit paste is just really textural and adds a lot of interest. So I hope you give these mica sprays a try and some of the new Tim Holtz products. And if you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.